By now, we all know that the king and queen of England specifically chose Kenya as their very first destination out of all the Commonwealth countries six months after their coronation. Why are they coming here? You might ask. Number one, they claim they are coming to celebrate 60 years of Kenya's independence from the British colonial rule. And that to me sounds like a narcissistic husband inviting himself into his ex-wife's divorce celebration. I am making this video because my attention was specifically drawn to the third ritualistic reason as to why these two are visiting Kenya. These two are coming to pay respect at the tomb of the unknown warrior at Uhuru Gardens. In case you did not know, this Tombs of the unknown warriors are graveyards that were invented specifically by the British and the French in 1920 to serve as storage facilities of spiritual honor to the British soldiers that died committing selfless acts for the British government. It is recorded that the selection of these unknown warriors was an exclusively secret event and special guards were always assigned to watch the tombs 24 7. My main question here is why is the king and queen of England coming to Kenya to honor the tomb of the unknown warriors when our own known Mau Mau warriors who fought for the independence of this country like Dead and Kimathi remain unhonored to date. If you kill him, Razi, Ukum Tani Kume, Chrome Sanaka Paipu, Katamatopo Nakanaka Mafi, yo. I think it has gotten to the point where we as African people really need to sit down and figure out exactly what the hell is going on here. Why are these, in quote, while rolling my eyes, royals from Europe coming down to the continent all of a sudden talking about they want to acknowledge the painful aspects of their history. What are these people really up to? That's what I want to know because just last week Friday here, the 20th of October 2023, we saw the royals from the Netherlands going to South Africa. I mean, for good reasons, justified reasons, indigenous South Africans were not very pleased to see them, okay? And me, a Nigerian, in Nigeria, was not very pleased to hear, see videos of and or read online that them folks took their two left leg to South Africa with all of the audacity in the world. Just moving around the place acting like they didn't do all of the things that we all know damn well that they did. I don't know what treatment they were expecting to receive from the locals but trust me when I say they got the treatment that they deserve because what were they even doing there? What were they thinking? going to South Africa after everything that they've done to South Africans. Indigenous South Africans to be specific, they got exactly the kind of treatment that is befitting of them. Okay, in my humble opinion, if I dare say, and I have said, if you missed this video and you want to check it out, it's linked down below in the description. Now back to the conversation. What I want to know is what exactly is going on here? Why are them royals from Europe taking turns coming to visit the continent all of a sudden? I scream suspicious. My side eye is side eyeing so much, the black in my eye is gone. I scream ulterior motive. Something is definitely going on here. There's no way I'm buying what these people are dropping. Historically, they have never moved honestly. So I have no reason literally to believe that they are being honest right now when they say that they want to acknowledge the painful parts of their history like nah i don't know but i feel like this is deception right here and we shouldn't fall for it i feel like this is just a way to butter us up and you know try to make us you know less angry with them while they are behind closed doors planning even more sinister moves you understand what i'm saying i feel like that's what's going on here because see if you are so sad about the painful aspect of your history i hope you'll be coming on the 31st Charles, Charles, I'm talking to you. Yeah. Prove to us that you're really sad. Come to Kenya on the 31st with, you know, the artifacts. 
you know, as a matter of fact, don't come with all ideas. Come with all of all of the artifacts that you have from the continent that is with you. Because if you are sad about what you did in Kenya, you definitely should be sad about what you did in Nigeria. You should be sad about what you did to the Benin people, my people in Edo State. You should be sad about what you did across the continent. Hell, you should be sad about what you did across the globe. So you know what? On your way to Africa on the 31st of October, come with, our, come with all our artifacts. And come with our reparations too, okay? You come to Kenya, don't worry, you can drop it there with President Ruto. He would get it down to each and every one of us. You cannot just say you feel you feel bad about what you people did and then you come empty-handed. Like, who do these people even think they are talking to? They think they can pacify us with words, not be alphabet with one chop. Show us actions. You feel bad? You, you acknowledge the painful part of the history. Oh, yeah, make on a walk towards righting the wrongs now because it's in you people's hands to right this wrong. Make on a walk towards doing the things that would show us that truly when you said that you are sorry, you mean it. Because you cannot just come here and feed us words. Like I said, not be alphabet with one chop. Start with the actions. Stop giving me alphabets. A, B, C is put together. That means painful acknowledge. Nah, I'm not buying that. And let's even really talk about this. What do they mean right now, 2023, that they want to acknowledge the painful aspects now? So since they were in denial, because the rest of the world have been acknowledging these wrongs that they did, right? But they are coming out now to tell us that they want to acknowledge it now. So these people, are they trying to tell us that they've been in denial? They've been acting like or thinking they did not do all the things that they actually really did. Because this is why this English matter, they tire me. They're acknowledging, they want to acknowledge the painful aspects now, in, in 2023. And now they want to start to acknowledge them. I mean, I mean, not they compute English again well. <laughs> I don't know, but I feel like this is deception right here and we shouldn't fall for it. I feel like this is just a way to butter us up and, you know, try to make us you know less angry with them especially given the present climate here on the continent seeing how africans are not a very big fan of europeans at the moment because you know we are starting to wake up here and starting to see them for who they are so i feel like right now they are just trying to butter us up and pacify us with words and try to derail our attention from the goal which you know let's stay on the goal guys so yeah i think they are just trying to calm us down and distract us with words while they are behind closed doors planning even more sinister moves buckingham palace made it clear today that the king will not shy away from addressing the past during his trip the visit will acknowledge the more painful aspects of the uk and kenya's shared history including the emergency 1952 to 1960 the palace said in a statement his majesty will take time during the visit to deepen his understanding of the wrongs suffered in this period by the people of kenya let me get this straight so it's within this period of time that he wants to deepen his understanding he did not deepen the understanding since see this man is old and gray he, ha he had so much time to deepen his understanding but now, now he won't deepen his understanding within the how many days he planned on staying he did not deepen it since these people shall i don't know who they are talking to or who they think they are actually talking to as for the king saying that he's going to learn more about the atrocities uh, his government because everything in britain is done in the name of the king or the queen right. <laughs> did uh, committed uh, it's a good statement from, you know, uh, sounding as if there is reconciliation. He is coming to learn nothing new. He already knows. Together, their majesties will tour a new museum dedicated to Kenya's history and will lay a wreath at the tomb of the unknown warriors at Uhuru Gardens as well as visiting the site of declaration of Kenya's independence in 1963. And that to me sounds like a narcissistic husband inviting himself into his ex-wife's divorce celebration. In the comments of the video I made about the royals from the Netherlands visiting South Africa, Joe Blow dropped this comment that I also wanted to highlight in this video. He says, it's like a serial killer making a humanitarian visit to their victims' families. 
both joe and our kenyan sister's comments really puts in perspective exactly what is happening here anyways guys that's that's my two cents on the whole thing this is the little update what do you think let me know down below in the comment section and of course if anything comes up anything significant happens when they show up i would definitely cover it on here and um yeah this is it i'm going to be leaving this right here and of course, as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Here are five rules the royals should follow for their trip to Kenya at the end of the month for entertainment purposes only. Okay, rule number one, do not bring anything to the country to the people that will be harmful to them once you leave, like bed bugs. I'm just saying it's a thing. And also it's worth mentioning you kind of have a history of it. You know, colonialism, tuberculosis, just saying, take all your ish with you when you go. Okay. Rule number two, on the flip, don't take anything with you that you did not come with. In fact, this may be the perfect time to return the Gaji drum that British soldiers stole more than 100 years ago. At last reports, it was just sitting in a storage room in a British museum. I mean, you're already in the neighborhood. You're going to be with the president. That would be a good thing to do. Just saying. Rule number three, let's be respectful of other people's culture and when they are sharing their culture with you. Rule number four, yes, I know it is important to be charming and embracing, yes, but let's not say who touched my bottom. Let's not make others the butt of a joke. That was in bad form, it was in bad taste. Let's not do that again. Rule number five, so this is a play off of the last rule when William said, who touched me? Nobody touched you, I promise. Yeah, just a reminder, yeah. I'm not saying this has been an issue, but don't touch our hair. Yes, I know. I know it's mysterious and it's glorious. It defies gravity. I know it's beautiful and we can do so many different things with it. But just a reminder, not saying it's ever been a problem, but just in case you question and you just get a quick concern, don't touch our hair. The sixth and final rule, do not give an autographed picture of yourself to the president and first lady of Kenya. This is not the gift that you think it is. Go back to the Bokomo drum. But again, is it really a gift if it already belonged to them? But let's think along that line. Not an autograph picture. And rule number seven, all roads lead to Africa. You can be bad about it, but they do. So my Kenyan cousins, did I leave out anything? Please stitch, share, make comments, and share your thoughts below.